Hi developers and friends, I'm Stefan Bertosz and today's video is inspired by the problem which I was solving during the week. The problem is a special use case, a combination of spring security and async annotation. All the details are different, but the concepts apply. And this program has at least two solutions, link to the GitHub project in the description. And let me show the code and speak about this. So the code is very simple and basically it's a simple REST API using the REST controller and some context path, which is REST API version 1 async. So really it's a simple REST controller which has one post and one get mapping. The aim of this is via post you can submit some new job or run or whatever or some asynchronous process and via get you can get the status and if we go down into the details for the async service we would see that the service is pretty simple and the submit method is here so what is special about this is that um, if the user calls the submit, we create a special object called async status. We set some date, user ID, status, obviously, and save it into the repository, into the database. So this is a synchronous, this is synchronous step. But then we would call another service, which is submit service, and the method run, which is really asynchronous. And basically that would be really called asynchronously. So basically then the response would be not immediate. But this call of the submit will return some ID back, which we got from the database, which is auto-generated. And as the submit service run is an async, let me show. It is an asynchronous transactional method and this can take a lot of time. We would like to basically run this in parallel to the normal processing. So when the user submits, the entry is created in the database and we asynchronously start submit service run. But it will not block our thread for the normal controller processing. So it will be an immediate result for the submit. And then user has a possibility to pull via get mapping and via basically via get status when he provides the ID from the submit step. And then he will re receive some status. So then the get is implemented very, uh, very similar. So get status with the ID and then we are getting the ID from the repository and translating this to the string. But that is not important. Important is this part of the code when you submit. And the speciality here is our REST API is protected with the basic out, which means username and password needs to be provided. And why we need this? Because we are also storing into the async status into database the user name or identificator of the user. So we need to know which user was invoking this. And the problem is when we run the code as an async in the submit service, if we would like to get the user, this is causing a problem then. Because um, in the standard setup, when using async and spring security it is not propagating the the user in the same context or in the thread to the underlying method to, to this run because it's basically a, a new thread then and that is causing a problem so uh, i will also show what does it mean another than that uh, some interesting pieces are uh, I'm using a Swagger interface 
Um, so there is a dependency with the Spring Doc Open API, which will uh, execute the Swagger stuff, and we are also using a security module to protect as well the Swagger interface. So you can really submit and as well input the security input into the Swagger. So I did execute it the terminal via standard boot run. So the application should be already running. So let's jump to the Swagger. And this is a Swagger. It has the authorize, which is not the default. Yeah, you need to have the dependency for this. And it has really an async controller and get and post. So let's open the post. We can try it out. We can execute this, but it is asking us for the username and password. And what is the username and password? Obviously, it is not hard coded, but we are using uh, application YAML configuration and we there created some entries. So let me let me show as well the YAML. It is running on the port 8888 and it is using some Spring security properties. So for the user, name is Stefan and password is test. And basically it has a standard role. So let's input Stefan. and password test. And now the call was executed. So what do we see? There was a post call and the response is one. Let's jump to the code. Why the response was one? Because it's basically an in-memory database and it was a first run. Uh, but in the logs we see there was some error. Why didn't we see the error back? Because what it was an async call, yeah. So we normally uh, we normally got a synchronous response, which is fine, and asynchronously the other thread which was executed to run this uh, submit method was failing. And why does it fail? Because we wanted to print out. I will show in the code. We wanted to print out the user in this async call method. And because, as I said, in the default setup, the, uh, the user is not propagated in the, in the async. And therefore, this fails with the null, null pointer exception. And what would be solution for this kind of a program? Um, how we could make uh, our method submit service um, to use the user. So I can think about two options. First one, and it is very, uh, <laughs> very logical one and easy one, is to add additional parameter to the submit service because we already know this user here. So we can propagate this as additional parameter to, to the method call. And we would print the user like this. And that would work. It's logical. Yeah. No problem with that. But obviously that's not a <laughs> nice solution. So what could be the nicer one? So the nice solution would be to use uh, something which Spring offers. And what does the Spring offers? Uh, if you use async, you can use the standard put pool uh, thread task executor, or you can use your custom one, for example. So let's define our own one and let's define this with some kind of a pool size some name and so on. So this is a bin that would be auto injected. And to make this work, we need to use this uh, executor as a delegate. And we need to define some special delegation for the security context in this kind of a sense. So we are using our treat pool task executor as a delegate here. And then the uh, state will be 
or security context will be really propagated as well to the async method. Obviously, we are using as well some security, which I didn't show yet, yeah, but this is more or less something standard. So what will happen if we use this kind of a tweak? So let's rerun the application again. Via Gradle we boot run. This will start and we will issue the request again. And let's see what happens. So the application is started up. Now let's repeat the request. It is the post, execute. We were already authenticated, so the response body is again one because we restarted. It was in memory, so nothing was stored. But let's see in our logs. And we see in the logs that security user who submitted was Stefan. A security user in async method is again Stefan. So looks good, or? And as well, we receive uh, some async status information, which all looks fine. And at the end, I want to show some other classes. So for example, the security util is just using the security context holder, context and authentication. And from there, we are getting the name. So that's a simple utility, which is then used here to get the user, which should be there if the, obviously if the user is authenticated. And because we are using a security config, which is having more or less some kind of a default setup and except of the whitelisted Swagger endpoints, it is requesting that any other request should be authenticated, so we should have a valid user there. Um, so as you've seen, uh, there are two solutions. One is the logical one, bypassing to the method um, user ID from the from the previous step, <laughs> from the previous call, or by using something which Spring recommends, creating a custom thread pool executor and then defining the delegating security context async task, ex task executor, which will be then passing this security to the underlying call of the async method, which makes sense, but this is really not default. so. You need to define it yourself. It is not a default behavior. And I had uh, troubles to find this out that why the method is not really working as it should be and why the user is not there. So, and I would say that's all folks. Yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. If yes, please uh, click like, subscribe, and there will be a bunch of new videos on various topics. So. Thank you for watching and have a nice day. Bye guys.